Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our awesome keynote today. My name is Anika Noor. I am the outgoing executive director of the International Game Developers Association Foundation. And before we get into a little bit about what I do, I'm here to introduce my awesome, awesome fireside chat mate, Guy Blomberg. Hello, everyone, and thank you, Nika, and I'm really excited to be here at talking to you all, uh, especially about networking in the games industry. But my name is Guy Blomberg, also known as Yug. Uh, I was previously the Global Gaming Content Director for Read Pop for brands like PAX, EGX, and Comic-Con. Uh, I'm currently the Program Director for Exceller, and I am the creator of the Games Industry Gathering Digital Networking Group thing so this is thing. this is a great thing the gig it's thing yes thing. yes so it's uh, it's it's very appropriate to be here talking about networking especially uh with the digital challenges that a lot of us have had over the last couple of years absolutely and and to add to it it's not even just about the digital challenges the igda foundation specifically focuses on supporting aspiring diverse game developers from around the world and a variety of countries who have been either facing a various um, set of restrictions or maybe they were trying to graduate from college and ready to leave to go out and explore the world and get their first job, but they haven't, now they haven't met anybody and they're stuck at home. Yeah. Um, we've definitely been supporting a lot of awesome developers, even uh, Kiwis and Australians in a variety of programs for us. We, the programs that we typically run in person are uh, the IGDA Foundation Scholars. So we look at students looking for their first job in the games industry. We have a category called Velocity. So if you've been in your career and maybe you're a little bit older because video game design wasn't even uh, an option for you in college or maybe your parents didn't approve of being a game designer <laughs> in college, right calling myself out on that one mm -hmm. or uh next gen leaders you know people who've been in the industry two to five years but they are suffering burnout they are tired of harassment maybe their boss is an asshole and they're thinking about leaving and so how do you support people from these variety walks of life so even this year and we'll, we'll get into it more we have opened up a new cohort we have included and been reaching out to historically black colleges and universities and that's really what it's about. It's about connecting people, not just in the current industry, but how do we grow pipelines and network and bring folks together in a community that are like trying to shoot their shot. So um, I know that was kind of an, kind of like a, you know, I think that's a great launching pad guide, right? <laughs> Get into it. No, I, I, no, I think, I think that's great. But uh, one of the really interesting things over the last couple of years for, and the, the programs you've got are amazing, but the difficulties and the challenges previously, it'd be like, okay, well, we'd go to conventions or we'd go to shows and, and, or GDC, and you've got programs to actually introduce people and, and, and help them get in front of people, the right people, or get that information via that way. Whereas the last two years, you know, we haven't had that, you know, the ability to actually connect people to, uh, to each other has been incredibly difficult. Uh, so I guess, like, I, my first question for you then uh, would be, over the last two years, the, the digital side of things, connecting people, uh, what's the differences been compared to previous years where it was in person? And, and uh, what's been the benefits and what's been the learnings uh, that, you know, for, for people that are doing it now? Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, so traditionally, you know, for our programs, if you're an aspiring game dev, we would, you know, you would win a scholarship, we would book your hotel and flight, we bring you in and you would have a very, you know, safe week long boot camp with other individuals that are in the same category as you other people that are also kind of navigating ways into the industry. And we do this because we, we want more diverse people in the industry. We want people from various socioeconomic backgrounds to have this opportunity. Um, I would say that like, even in technology and gaming in general, I feel like maybe like 2010, it was just so much easier to like create a game and pitch and get on the market. And now the market is saturated Yeah. and there's no good navigation. Like there's no great, um, like, here's the strategy to go from intern to CEO in sure. game. 
And a lot of it is through building relationships, through networking, through building those soft skills. And so with digital, it was definitely, it was definitely tough because let's also be, I mean, let's be really candid, like guy, you and me are big pontificators. <laughs> it doesn't take much for us to say anything, but a lot of people come from backgrounds or they're developers that maybe they haven't had the opportunity to build out some softer soft skills or leadership skills. And that's why yeah. it's so important yes. to navigate. Yeah. When it comes to digital, it was almost kind of like we were back in this wild, wild west conundrum. Trying to articulate that, yeah. Kind of sad and like, oh no. But for me, I don't know. I I saw this opportunity of like, oh, the market isn't saturated anymore. There's a different way to reach out to voices and communities that would have never had a chance to get to GDC if they wanted to. Yeah. I love love GDC, I love Game Developers Conference, but if, if imagine you're running an organization where you fly people from marginalized backgrounds. And it's 10 o'clock at night and you're wondering if they're like safely walking down the streets of San Francisco to their hotel room. Yeah. Yeah. There's very, very different. There's something about it. So even though nothing can replace in-person programming, there's almost this level of safety and moderation that I can put, you know, my personal skin into the organization or into the pipeline and ensure a genuinely safe space because like before i think i could never give anybody a 90 percent or an 80 percent guarantee but yeah. i feel much better that we can get close to a hundred percent guarantee of safety when it comes to online yeah i think i think there's this interesting thing with with networking you know, i realized that a lot of the people that were they're probably watching this are you know it's it's an intimidating space to be in the idea of actually approaching people that are you know, uh, long-term experienced professionals in the industry, and it can be intimidating to know the right thing to say or how to interact. And I think one of the most uh, fascinating things over the last year and a half with the, you know, interacting digitally has been, I think the IRL component of actually networking is incredibly intimidating, having to actually get, build up the confidence and, and, and talk to people and, and ask them the right questions and whatnot. Digitally, you can be a lot more comfortable. You can actually have like notes right next to you if you actually want to ask these questions. It's, it's, not, it's not as, you know, in a large group, it's, it's, it's very different. And I think it's actually an easier way to ease yourself into having conversations with people and understanding those soft skills of, of networking so that when you do go back to physical events, hopefully in the near future, uh, you've actually built up a lot of those existing skills. I actually hope that, you know, uh, the digital networking components and the opportunities continue to exist because they're going to give people a better ramp to actually build up those networking skills. But Guy, I mean, you know, I, I know we, we've done quite a few of these, you know, Zoom calls and, sure. and speeches, but it's like, we always talk about the future and we do, the, we, I feel like a year ago we talked about, we did these talks like, well, in the future when it opens up, yeah. but I'm almost hesitant to say like, oh, well, in the future, I'm kind of like, how, when do we stop talking about like the future and when we have hope to go back in person and start navigating networking in the present, right? Like, and, and dealing with the fatigue. Cause like, I don't know about you, but for me, sometimes it's like five o'clock. I've spent all day working. I made a cup of soup. I sit on the couch and I just can't get up to like get back on another for a social call and networking call. Sure. And it's, I feel like you've done a good job of marathon through it. It's look, it's the, I mean, we have this problem with the gig, which is, which is a Friday night event every, every, you know, week or two weeks. And a lot of people are like, look, I just, I'm not, I'm, I'm exhausted by the end of the week. I don't particularly want to jump on, on more video calls, but ultimately the physical interactions are going to come back in some way, shape, or form like they they absolutely will what's interesting though is how much the digital components that we've got are going to stick around and let's be honest even in the before times it was difficult going to san francisco to gdc that's it's the, one of the most expensive cities in the world like it's one of the most expensive cities to actually go to buying the ticket is expensive the digital side of things is actually opened things up 
globally to a much larger degree than it ever has before. I think there's going to be a combination, but I think for, for people that are building up these networking skills, having that digital component that really wasn't there as much previously because people didn't want to actually do Zoom calls or video calls or, or whatever, whereas now it is the norm. I think that path for them, whether that, that is consistently how they interact and network, uh, or if it's a path for them to actually build up skills when they're doing it physically, I think is awesome. That's, that's the things to keep in mind is this digital space that we have, this digital networking, op these opportunities, the comfortability that everyone in the industry has in, in actually communicating like this now. When I, when I call someone now, I, I, it, it's usually expected that it's a video call for better or worse, but it's just the standard. So that's what I'm interested to see. Uh, when when events come back, not so much that it just replaces the digital side of, the digital side of things, but it exists alongside it. So we'll see. The other jam that I was I was I was dealing with this the other day, like I and I'm curious to know if your perspective is the same. I feel like there's a lot of in terms of networking. I feel like it's really easy to network, or there's a lot of people to network with that are in their early stages and maybe the, like the mid career are all talking to each other. But for us that may be like mid to like senior, mid level, et cetera, there's almost kind of like a barrier between like people that are in leadership and the networking scene in games. I feel like I, in real life, I could like go up to a CEO or a vice president and, you know, Boom, 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 boom. And like, <laughs> I can only find them in real life. Right. And I, in digital, I feel like I have to like dig, right? I, you know, I feel like I'm not just walking into an investor anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, that is the thing that, that real life events kind of have over the digital side of things is in real life, if there is a gathering of, of folks in a particular place, then you can have those those random interactions and, and be in the same space and walk up to someone quite comfortably as opposed to chasing them down in a digital space. Although I will say there are existing digital spaces where people can, can actually network in the games industry. And obviously I'm going to plug the, the games industry gathering thing that we've been doing, but also, and especially for any of the students or folks watching, like your, uh, your IGDA, your discord groups that are specifically revolve around different uh, gaming communities. You've got you've got Discord groups that drill down into location based uh, gaming communities, but also gaming producer groups or developer groups or distributor groups or media groups or community managers. Like you can find your your crew, you can find your 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 people that are involved in the specific aspect of games that you want to actually network with and actually meet and greet in the digital space if you want to. Uh, but you're right. It is it is drilling down and, ch and chasing it a little bit more than you would at a physical event. Yeah. yeah, I do feel like I have better rapport with like minded members and people that are in the mid career that I would have never built those genuine relationships with. I feel like I'm building the net. I mean, this is why it's not like if you are looking for an investor or if you're looking for funding and those very senior people are not on these calls it hasn't been like a waste though because people like us that are in this kind of like senior mid entrepreneurial I feel like 10 years from now we're going to be those senior people well you know, yeah the kingdom and I'm like well I'm just gonna make friends with everybody here because we're all gonna be running this shit anyway in 10 <laughs> 20 years well, okay I mean Probably, but yeah, uh, right? let, like, let's everybody watching this 10 years <laughs> from now is going to be running something, you know, <laughs> almost by doing this keynote, we're pretty much networking because now I'll be like, remember that time you got GCAP? Now give me all your money, right? <laughs> <laughs> a, li a little bit, actually, but th this is good, actually. Like, what for, for the folks that are watching, I mean, you know, mostly, uh, you know, young folks that are actually getting just getting into the games industry or getting their start in the industry, like, what's the and maybe this isn't even digital networking. Maybe this is actually just networking in general. But if they're trying to connect with with folks that are more senior or in leadership positions or, or whatnot, like what's the advice for just even starting those conversations? Like even, even you know, uh, uh, how do you even reach out to people like that? What's the, I mean, I remember, you know, back in the day when, when I first started, you know, entering the games industry, mainly via the media route and i would be contacting developers and publishers trying to actually 
interview them or whatnot. And it was incredibly intimidating. Here's people that have done games that I looked up to. Uh, like they were, these were my heroes, you know? And a lot of the time I didn't reach out to them. This is before Twitter or anything. I didn't reach out to them just because I was like, I, I don't want to even have the fear of rejection you know, wow. from these from these folks I was talking to. So, like, what is what kind of advice or suggestions would you give for for folks that are trying to reach and outreach to to people that are more senior? Quite a bit. So, I'm 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 lucky because twofold. One, I'm shameless. <laughs> Just, that's just, your advice everyone I be never, shameless <laughs> I'm, no I'm just I'm just shameless and I want to give the context before I give the tips because I hate when people are like and this is how I did it because it all just ha- like you know those people that are like you, you know when you watch like a weight loss commercial and people are like well I was just naturally skinny and then I lost my five vanity pounds no I'm gonna, yeah. so I love to give the context of like here's why before I give the tips of that outreach because it's sure. I don't want to minimize like your fear of your shiro or whatever but a like and this isn't advice this is the context before my advice so one I'm ruthlessly shameless like I I 100% view people in this world like you eat and I eat and we all have to sleep and we all like we're to me I look at everyone and I'm like we're the same there's no superior there's no inferior like we all end up in the earth one day that's I know we went to a dark place but to me like I mentally level people out as like you're not better (laughs) than me and I'm not better than you like yeah what I was you know so that's where the shamelessness comes from the second is um and it was it was like terrifying and adrenaline rushing and whatever, but like the minute we switched from in-person events to COVID, I had to serve, I was in survival mode. Like for those that know, the IGDA foundation only runs in-person events. I had just fundraised for all of our wonderful scholars, students, et cetera, to go to GDC. And then we didn't see any of those funds, even though we spent the funds against flights and hotels. Sure. So I, having no other option but to call the crap out of everybody on the internet and strangers I've never met and built like I don't have a choice if I didn't call everybody the foundation wouldn't have existed at the end of the year we would have never been able to support or help anybody ever again or at least for the foreseeable future and I had 70 60 70 kids that all of a sudden had their dreams crushed and had like not, not like they were, you know, under our umbrella, ready yeah. to get this boot camp, ready to get their life started. And like, they were just like in my jurisdiction. Like I just had them, I had them no money yep. and possibly had to lay off our team being myself included by the end okay. of the year. Okay. And so I give that context because being shameless and being in survival mode is a great combination for networking online. <laughs> and that's the caveat I give to kind of these tips. So from the experience, the very real experience, like in my head, it was just go time. Now, if you don't have go, if you, if, if it's go time for you, you're never embarrassed. So if you don't have go time, that's something else. But the the truth of the matter is like, put yourself in whatever mentality or mindset you need to do to hit send and not be able to take it back. Mm. And then hit send, like just set up 20 emails and hit like send 50 times in a row. The more you do it, the, the more comfortable you get. It's like, Think of it as a piece of tape. If you stick a piece of tape on and rip it off, it's going to hurt. And if you take that piece of tape and put it somewhere else on your body, it's going to hurt a little bit less. It gets a little less sticky. There's an interesting aspect to that as well, which which I learned was eventually you're you're probably going to make a mistake or you might send the, you know, the wrong emails or you might uh-huh. approach someone and you might freeze up or anything like this. And, and that's bad in the moment, but it actually creates this incredible... Uh, sensation that you've got in the future where you know how bad it can be as in like you've got this baseline now of going oh well it's not going to be as bad as that like that's that was a really bad experience but now I've gone through that I know what that's like and you know it's even, even if I did that again I know what it's like on the other side as well it's a really when you fail in some particular way shape or form it actually gives you a really good perspective 
on what, you know, it actually puts less pressure on you. It makes you feel more comfortable because yeah. you've already gone through it. So whether that be sending emails or even just, you know, walking up to someone and saying hi or trying to actually get someone's details, like if you've got that baseline, it's, it's incredibly powerful. Well, and, and it's like, I don't even call it failure, but like, yeah, when you mess up, if you send 50 emails, you're going to mess up. I'll tell you, I totally sent an email. <laughs> hey, Tawny, you know, to somebody named Sam. <laughs> like, it, yeah. you have to be gentle with yourself in the sense like I'm going to mess it up and here's and like when you send it up or when you goof and you send the wrong contract or when those things happen it's just about like feeling crappy for 10 minutes getting into it getting ahead of it not blaming anybody else but yourself and just getting ahead of it apologizing you know don't send a telenovela like a mm. novel about it laugh about it, be professional and move on. When the other, if you, and I've had one of these, if the, if the other person on the end of your mess up just becomes like an entire like Godzilla moment, like you suck, you whatever, that's not on you. Yeah. That's not. Their character. That's a bad partner. You don't want to work with someone unless that investment or that capital or that network or that relationship really is everything. But like, if you're reaching out to them, for example, for like a job and because you called them Tawny instead of Sam and they go full Godzilla on you, you don't, it's actually like, thank you for showing me who you are. Yeah. We're in a global pandemic. Yeah. Way to, <laughs> way way to have avoided it. it. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, if I met you in a, in real life, I probably would have still called you Tawny because I'm terrible with names. Like, you know, I think I've called guy in different names 80 times before I realized his name, he's a guy named guy. Right. It's true. Yeah. I'm not great with names. Like mistakes happen. And it's more about you just controlling your reaction and not theirs and make sure that you are chill and professional and you do whatever you need to do personally to get through it. Sure. Sure. Yeah. No, no, that's right. If you don't make any mistakes, then you're not really doing enough outreach anyway. Um, And also like you're sending 50 emails. Don't forget you had 47 wins and one loss, right? Like if this was a sports scoreboard, everyone always focuses on the one fail and they forget, well, I'm like, dude, you just, you just got 47 points. Like, (laughs) what? you know, perspective again. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> I like this. I, I like this, this, this train of things as well, in terms of uh, these tips for, for uh, talking to people, networking, uh, introducing yourselves or, or whatever. Uh, I want to go down here a little bit more because I think we've got a bunch of them. And as much as they, they apply in general, uh, they're still very relevant for the digital side of things, especially outreach and, and connecting to folks. And then once you've, act- once you've actually connected to them in some way, shape or form, like what's the, what's the best way to, uh, continue that conver- the conversation you have, whether that be an email or if you do get a video call or if you're in a group of people with video calls. Uh, and, and one of the, the bits of advice that was incredibly helpful for me early on in my career, uh, which, which just, just helped me in every social situation I had, but especially in the games industry, was to ask questions. You know, it's very easy to actually kind of, you know, go on and on. These are, these are, this is me and this is all the things that I'm doing and, and whatnot. But really one of the most powerful things you can do is ask questions of the other person you're talking to. Get them to talk about themselves as yeah. much as possible. Because not only will they, you know, you'll find out more about them that you can either remember next time you see them, which creates a memorable moment, or you can actually just query and go down that path of, of finding out more about them but they'll actually feel closer to you if you're actually inquiring and wanting to find out about them it's a really interesting psychological side to to conversations but incredibly valuable and it puts a lot of the pressure off you because you're just asking the questions and finding out about them as opposed to actually having to talk about yourself which again can be very intimidating if you're not used to it no absolutely i mean and another kind of aspect of this is like I love what you said about making them like making other people talk about themselves more. I can't tell you. I've totally, I totally one time on a 30 minute call, I, t- I timed it because I thought it was amazing. I only talked for three minutes. <laughs> the other person talked for 27 minutes. That person still emailed me being like, I had a great time. Yep. You're so 
so fun. Yeah. <laughs> I love what you're doing. <laughs> like, I'm always like, yeah, what was my name? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. There is. I might, there's a balance of like, I don't know, guy, what your opinion is on like, do you ask for a video call because you're, you know, do you ask for a video call when you're making the ask? Like, I've had people reach out because they want to talk for an hour. I've scheduled calls for 15 minutes. Like, when you're time, when you have, I mean, time is like literally the only currency in this world you don't buy back. Yeah. Now that's a- only currency you cannot buy back. Yeah. How do you like, how do you even know what to ask for? You know, like I've seen people bait like an hour long call cause they feel bad, but they really only had a five minute question and now they're just hanging out. <laughs> yeah. I, I think, I think it's also really important when you reach out to someone digitally, digitally that maybe you don't know as well. So that for, for whatever reason you're trying to connect or try to network. Uh, and if you do want to get to a point where you start to build up a personal rapport, you've got to, provide a reason for a video call that would justify a longer conversation. So I've had people reach out to me and be like, oh, can you, do you think you can give me some advice around, around this particular subject? That's been a usual, a pretty good one that's gotten me to go, yeah, well, let's have a conversation and talk about that. Whereas if they come up with a question that's like, oh, do you think you can connect me to this person or, or whatever? Can I have a video call so you can maybe, you can tell me which people I should connect with? It's like, that that doesn't need to be a video call. I will just give you the emails or, or loop in an email or, or something like that. I think mm -hmm. if you go down the route of wanting to connect with someone over a video, and that is the best way at the moment to really, build up a rapport and a memorable rapport like it really is but you've got to provide a reason for that that justifies a video call that couldn't be done couldn't be answered over over a message and and i actually think one of the best ways to do that is it sounds maybe a bit well i mean we're talking about tips and tricks here but uh, yeah. I, I would try and be a little a little vague and broad in in what you need so that you kind of don't want to keep going back and forth in messages, you kind of want to go, could you give me some, some overall advice or feedback or, or, or something down that particular path? I think that's a good opening or at least indicate that there's a larger conversation that you'd like. And, and then if, if it's intimidating to actually go down that route, put a cap on it and actually say, I don't want to take up more, more than like 15 minutes of your time. 15 minutes is a good number for, for an easy, quick meeting where, uh, you know, there's, if it's, if it, if it can't drag on too long, it, 15 is pretty good. And, and I, I think most people won't actually reject that, uh, that 15 minute mark either. So and when I don't people, know. like if the conversation is good and like, you don't have enough meeting, it's only 15 mm. minutes. Some, some people will be like, I have another like five, 10 minutes, you know, like it's, if, if, if you're slick about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's like going on a date sort of thing. Don't, don't go out to dinner on the first date, grab a coffee first. So it's like, you know, you've got that, that you just, you know, see, see, get to know each other, see, see how it goes first. So what don't about, go straight to dinner. What about, okay. I feel like we're going to have a different perspective here, but like, well, good. This is okay. Fascinating. Approaches, approaches to cold calling people. Like you may have seen somebody's talk or whatever. I feel like I get, emails like they always and again i'm shameless and i also like now i don't even know what time is anymore sometimes i'll get emails or i'll i'll run into somebody in like a discord server i know yep. it's not using air quotes but like run into someone being the virtual air quotes True. but i really run into people on discord or whatever or i'll be in the middle of like another text chain or whatsapp signal we know yep. you I have, to, I have a headache from all the platforms i get it i'm the same but i'll literally run into somebody who will be like Oh, Nika, I've, uh, I, I saw your thing six months ago and I wanted to reach, I've always wanted to reach out to say hi, yeah. but I've been so, you know, I just fi figured you were always really busy and it's, I, it's been a, it's been a desire of mine to talk to you for six months. And I'm sitting here like, you waited six months? <laughs> And I'm trying not to make them feel bad, right? But I'm like, you know, I'm one of the most accessible people on the internet. 
<laughs> You're not hard to find. That introspection when I go to get my coffee refill, my water refilled, I'm like, man, six months? Like, <laughs> I think, you know, like. Saying that though, like, as in like, so I, my thoughts on that is, I think when you, when you approach people and you say that, it undermines yourself. So it undermines yourself where it's like, oh, I waited for six months. It's like, you didn't need to, you know, that, that there's, you can, there's a certain level of uncomfortable. I've had this with this with people as well. I'm like, I'm so easy to contact on every platform and people are like, oh, I've always wanted to reach out, but I was, I, I maybe felt intimidated or, or whatever. And there's a, there's a part of me that's like, you know, and obviously empathetic, empathetically, you know, we'll respond and, and be like, well, I'm here now what was your your question and everything like this but i don't think you need to do that with people really in, in terms of cold outreach uh if, if you provide and you ask a question that's specific to the person that you're reaching out to as well it's it's very different just saying i'm a big fan and i i just want to say hi i want to connect right. and i want to get to know you it's like well that's not the path there's got to be a reason that's tied to what that individual does or is passionate about in i mean passionate about would that's the way to go in the industry and then you can just reach out and be like hey i, I can i get a moment of your time you know i wanted to ask you about this and, and that's when you go down the path of like asking a question that either leads into just more text conversations or if you can get a 15 minute voice video call but uh but yeah have don't even if you're not feeling confident you don't need to undermine no. yourself yeah before you've even gotten to the point of reaching out so. Like if, if some people look again, if, if somebody's truly busy, they'll tell you if, um, they react like, Oh, I'm too busy. You don't want to talk to them anyway. <laughs> like, and lastly, like, I, I mean, and I'm, I, you know, I feel like there are going to be people watching this that are like, they just give up all of their time. Like, and maybe that's a way to go into, like, I have recently started, I used to, I mean, I, 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 vulnerable moment I burned out I burned out so I mean guy knows I was doing so many calls with so many strangers last year in the pandemic I think I would literally wake up at like 6 a.m brush my teeth chug old coffee and then get on a zoom call like with a little bit of mascara and be like I'm here let's go you know and then I would just literally keep doing like calls till 11 o'clock and written now because I've you know, everybody wanted to help each other it was early in the pandemic, but now I, you know, I set better boundaries in the sense that I'm like, I know everyone's really busy. I, I try to even specify I'm really swamped working on X and that's where my focus needs to be. I need to be present in the type of work, especially the type of work I've been doing at the IGA foundation. Sure. It yeah. Requires different level of a mental, mental bandwidth. And now say, can you please reach out to me in October? And the people who actually do follow up, like uh, against, like you, it's actually been a great way to actually weed out serious meetings, like okay. who are genuine. If yep. I give them a task, like, hey, will you? Good to know that this is what you need. Read this article. Reach out to me in October. At, at, like fifty percent of my meetings don't follow up. I, they don't I, do their homework. I'm like, well, but that's what you wanted. You wanted to learn about this. I gave you a homework assignment. I said, call me in October. I, I think that's that's actually a really interesting note as well in terms of doing your homework, not just for the question that you're about to ask. If it's something that can easily be answered by looking up Google, then that can be really annoying, but also do your homework on the individual that you're actually wanting to talk to. And this goes for in real life or digital uh, networking at all. Like know something about them. Don't like, you know, know something just a bit more about them and what they do. You don't want to be in a scenario where you're like, oh, it'd be I, I I don't know. You're you 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 say it wouldn't it be good if they had experience in this, and they're like, I that's what I've been doing for the last twenty years. Like, do your homework on the the questions you're going to ask, and if you do, if you're reaching out to someone, like ask things that specifically they can answer, but not something that like can easily be found on the web by looking it up for for two minutes. So, um, Nika, what do you do if people don't respond? What do you do if you're outreaching to someone and they don't? respond do you, do you keep plugging away do you just do you do you stop or is there some in the middle tricks that you can do what do you what, what do you think i it depends on my objective so every email i send out 
I always like set my own intention. I'm not trying to be all like yoga about it, but cause it, it is right. It's not just like, I'm, I'm learning to be much more stringent about my time. Welcome to thirties. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh. sure. you know, like you know, just for, you know, even for the record, like I don't even do a good job of like spending like my, my free time is very precious because I don't have much of it. Like I barely, I barely even like it, have the bandwidth to keep up with family. And that's a whole other thing. And with, with COVID and the pandemic, I assume that everybody else has something going on. Like yep. they're trying to freaking teach their kids at home. Their husbands are annoying. Like they've, you know, the air fryer stopped working and they can't meal prep for the week. Their neighbor, you know, sadly has a case through a breakthrough case of COVID, even though they're vaccinated and they're like spending sure. their like you know there's a hurricane that created a power outage like it just feels like there's always some sort of like life circumstance and everybody gets indirectly involved people are still trying to make mortgage payments rent payments contractor deadlines so they're trying to get their game time and so i never view i always start with like what am i asking for and then i never view, so i you i had a boss that one time said no response is a response you know what I mean? Like if you follow up or whatever, like that, if you get, if you get no response, that's basically a no. I don't believe in that. I believe in use your words. I think words are important. I think words matter. I'm not going to make any assumptions until I hear from you. Yeah. And this is a boss from a bazillion, yeah. you know, not in gaming. Like I don't want everybody to look up who are Nika's bosses, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right, like, okay, speaking, well done. Who yeah. Are the games industry is like no. <laughs> it's, um, and so I make no assumptions because majority of time when I've had no response and I've followed up with people, I can very. I have a great example of like there is somebody that committed to doing something. It was important to the foundation, etc. I had to email them fourteen times to get that task done. Yeah. I not on the staff level or external, and it's because that person is just grinding like yeah. the industry crunch is real like and you know as a nonprofit, you know that you are like the last thing on somebody's mind and it's not that they don't want to talk to you or whatever i you know if somebody has verbally committed like and i definitely get a thing like oh we're definitely going to do this and we're definitely going to do this and we're definitely going to do this then like i will follow up with you relentlessly because you really meant it and it's yeah. just you just have too much going on if yeah. it's Whole, I will schedule kind of like weekly yeah. and I'll only probably follow up like three times. And then if that cold call was really important to me, I will try again in a couple months because yep. like maybe somebody just had a baby. Like you just never know these days because nobody's posting anything on social media either. Like yeah, yeah. I feel like people aren't celebrating their own life moments, you know. Yeah. And kind of stalk and be like, "Oh, what's up with them?" Like, I've been on the other side of this, you know, quite a bit as well, where you know people have tried to get the, you know, in, in contact with me, and for whatever reason, uh, and again, just life stuff or 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 things, you know, uh, slip through the cracks, especially with emails and things of like this. You know, it, it's it it happens, and it happens quite a lot. But what completely ruins it is uh, there was one example that I'll use of I got a, a DM on Twitter. My DMs are open on Twitter out of the blue with a, a person basically super passively aggressively saying, you know what, I, if you don't have time for me, you know, I'd appreciate you respond. And, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, who the like, and first of all, it's like from their 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 twitter account there in the instagram I'm like i'm sorry what are you talking about it turns out they'd been trying to get in contact with me for about the last two months but their emails had been filtered straight to my spam filter i had not seen a single email that they'd sent through and they had progressively just been getting more and more oh this person's a jerk or they're, they're you know like and they're there i went back and looked through their emails and it was it was like watching someone deteriorate each time when they're like, I'm never going to hear back from this person. So I'm just going to be more, you know, like Ooh, you're a I terrible do person. That. And it, don't, it's, don't do that for people watching. Don't don't even if you don't. Yeah. Your, I mean, guy might give you a different. <laughs> I know life has, but don't deteriorate. Mm -hmm. any, like stay professional. 
yeah, stay, stay professional and just realize like, you know, I, if, if they'd reached out to me on, on Twitter and got through to me and said, hey, you know, uh, I, I want to contact you about this. I've been trying to contact you. I wasn't sure if you've been getting my emails, you know, yeah. uh, I don't want to be too pushy. Like the other thing is uh, via text, email or messages, uh, I, I would say this is a little bit different in, in real life. Be confident and, 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 and uh, you know, you don't need to be too apologetic when you're talking to people in real life. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But on text and email, I would go overboard on the other direction of saying, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah. Because it's, it, 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 it's very easy to misinterpret things yeah. in, in text. A tone it comes across completely different depending on who's oh, yeah. reading it at what time. Uh, so be overly overtly apologetic be be overtly friendly uh and and never deteriorate down that that path you just don't know how, what the other person has actually seen or what the other person is going through and uh if you want to get the last thing you want is what happened with this person with me where i'm like i have no interest in talking to you ever again like this is yeah completely disrespectful so do you yeah. i feel like this is something i'm i when it comes to that like networking like I struggle with how spread thin we are on platforms. Like right. I prioritize my work email because like that, like to me, like that's the best way. But like, I always, always miss Twitter DMs. Like I'll, I'll, I'll open them for like a conference of, you know, like something like this. And then I'll forget to close them. I miss Twitter DMs. I miss LinkedIn messages, though I'm getting yeah. better at those. I am still garbage with Discord. Like, sure. literally, I'm just trash. I still don't even know where the tags are. Like, no, it's fine. Everyone like, just mutes every server they join anyway. So that's, that's uh, fine. Yeah, it's just, it's, uh, how do you know how to reach out, you know? I, I think that, uh, first of all, the platforms are very specific. Like, if you're reaching out to a cold messaging or adding someone on LinkedIn, because you're wanting a professional conversation with them in some way, shape, or form, that is a platform that is is suitable for that that particular path. If you add someone on Facebook and send them a direct message unsolicited, that is actually probably not the best way to go. That can come across really uh, uh, almost intrusive, you know. And things like uh, Twitter and Instagram are, are, are probably in the in between. I, one of the things I'd suggest is if you're ever, especially on on Twitter. Uh, or if you're ever wanting to actually contact them directly, ask them first, and you can ask publicly, it's, would you mind if I DM'd you? You know, you can actually ask these things. So it's like, it, it gives a bit more of a, a, an in. Yeah, ex exactly. And, and, or at least giving that consent almost to actually like talk to someone or, or ask them first. But uh, I would also say that if you don't, again, if you don't receive a response on a particular platform, like you said, I don't, I don't check LinkedIn every day. Like I'll, I'll, I'll maybe check it once. A, I'll check it maybe once a week. And then there'll be like, you know, a bunch of messages come through and I'll just kind of, you know, go through them quickly. Yeah. So depending on what kind of response you want, you know, people will respond. I've had people reach out to me on TikTok and like, you know, me they're, they're <laughs> messaging. <Why>? So they <laughs> <to> like, <laughs> no, but like it's, it's, it is kind of whatever, whatever path you can to reach out to someone, but just recognize <laughs> certain social platforms are a bit more intrusive and personal uh, than others. Yeah. I, there's someone I love. Okay. I'm going to bring him up on this. Cause I love, I love giving him, I love giving him smack. Right. Uh, my Like an ex a great example of someone that is like unconventional reach out to, but I love him to pieces. Rami. I think Rami's format is so endearing because whenever you reach out to Rami, that his email out coming back to you is like, here's the 80 ways that I will not talk to you, but I will also talk to you. I hope I watch yeah. this entire conference email him just to get this, <laughs> so to get a screenshot of his email. Sure. Um, like Ronnie is interesting. He almost exclusively uses Twitter. Like for me to hang out with Rami, like I can't send him like pictures on Facebook, whatever. I have to send him Twitter. I actually gave up. I actually just talked through his assistant. Yeah. Wait, you know, but I think like that's interesting as like people like that, like this goes back to like doing your homework. There are yeah. very specific people that are very, it's funny, like the more accessible and the more prominent and the more that they're really to give back, the more of like a very intense. And at first I used to be like, who do you think you are? And now I'm like, I'm very jealous. <laughs> <laughs> he, gets, he, no. gets, he 
can take so many meetings. He can support so many people because he has these like categorized ways of like, he's kind of streamlined. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. It's a really good point. That's funny. Yeah. Getting through to getting through to him was, was tough in the past. Um, I, I, I'm not sure how much time we have left here. We uh, have about another five minutes or so. Well, th- there's, there's probably one other thing that I'd, I'd like to just mention, especially, I think we've talked a lot about, you know, uh, outreach and, and, you know, how to actually communicate with people. And a lot of the things we've talked about are, are kind of networking 101 kind of tips and advice in general as well. Um, but very specifically to this format, this yeah. video, Zoom call, Google call, Discord, whatever, this, these, this particular format. I just wonder if we've got any uh, like suggestions or, or piece of advice, pieces of advice in terms of connecting with people like this. So yeah. for, I guess, for, for example, like I think that, uh, and, and differences to actually seeing people in real life. I, th- I think a key thing, one of the things that comes to my mind is uh, usually when you're talking in this format, it is from here up. A lot of the usual social body cues that you, you know, you read from people, uh, you, you can't see the way you're standing or the, you know, the way you're leaning in or, or whatnot. You can't, it's very much from here up. Uh, and it's important to realize that you might be giving off a lot of social cues that you think are obvious, but they're not to the other person because they can only really see your face. And I, I think you should be a little bit more uh, overt, a little bit more obvious when you're having, and a little bit more animated as well when you're having video calls to try and get across your tone that you can't get across with the rest of your body uh, in a bit of a better way. So, yeah. Well, and guy, you, your audio cut out for a little bit. Hopefully the zoom recording did catch it. <laughs> Welcome to the virtual world of networking. Yep. But I definitely did. the other jam, I mean, we, we've had so many people we've used to actually do like zoom on camera training, like things it's weird, but like it now, because zoom is normalized, things kind of matter. Like be mindful of what's behind you. Yep. Um, it's silly. Don't wear your pajama bottoms on Zoom call. I mean, it depends on the type of person you are. Like for me to feel professional, like if I'm feeling professional, if I'm feeling like I'm in the work gym, then I'm go- it's going to come across in the video. Yeah. You know, guys done a lot of calls with me in various like networking settings. Like guy can tell probably like he can't tell, but he can probably sense that I'm like, in a comfy shirt, you know, <laughs> it's a different demeanor. It, it just absolutely is. There's some, and it doesn't take much these days to get ready, but like, you know, like I don't pick on someone. I I'm much more of a no judgment, whatever, but like sure. I will, but like if we're trying to like do some sort of acquisition or trade of whatever, or, or trade of offers and, and you've got a giant spaghetti stain on your shirt, like it, it appear, it, like I'm nice, but you never know who you're talking to or what yep. you're thinking. The way I describe it is I don't like, the, I think visual is really important because a face attaches and creates that emotional connection or that empathetic connection. But I give, I like to give my, the other Zoom person like zero to no excuses. Like how I look and how my appearance and stuff is, is going to create no reason for you to have a negative reaction or like yeah. a less than superior 30 minutes. Yeah. Right? Again, if I'm going to spend 30 minutes with you, let's make it awesome. Cause that's 30 yeah. minutes. I'm not going to have that. Like, let's have fun. Let's make it whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And guy, you are so on point when it comes to being more emphatic secret trick. You can tell I'm from Los Angeles. <laughs> Even when you are like a lot of my friends grew up going to casting auditions, et cetera. Like when you are doing casting and auditions, a secret tip is anytime you're doing anything in front of a camera, you're always told to be way bigger than you yeah. can feel, to exaggerate more. That 100% hits meetings. I mean, I get louder. I get <laughs> more. I mean, still the same in person. I'm yeah. not authentic. But you do want to exaggerate a little bit more because people, uh, you want, especially if you're networking, you want people to remember you for the right reasons. Yes. You want people to get off the call going, that was awesome. Now I have to go back to my job, right? (laughs) Really critically as well. Like it's very easy in the, in these calls to be distracted by, 
other things. How often will so, you, you'll be talking to someone? And if you're not, you know, keeping that energy level up, they can be like, I'll just pop up my email and have a quick look. I'll, I'll oh have a look God. at this. It's the equivalent of, you know, being in a, in a, in a, a meeting with someone or talking to someone and they just stop looking at you and they look at their phone, but you can get away with it easier on a video call. You really want to try and uh, avoid folks doing that because it's so easy in this format. I think the only distraction that has become Zoom acceptable that was never acceptable in real life is if your pet is doing something funny. <laughs> yeah, then, you, <laughs> then you must bring them on camera. <laughs> I'm totally like, I have, and this sounds really bad. I think one time I was, I really was going after a deal and just, you know, Googled the person and they had lots and lots of dogs all over their thing. And I have totally borrowed a neighbor's dog and been like, and sometimes I dog sit this guy. And that was, you know, my call. And I definitely landed that sponsorship. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know what? I, I actually think this is a great way to, to wrap this up uh, yeah. with that last piece of advice to say that if you're ever unsure on a video call, grab your pet. Grab yeah. your pet. <laughs> that will <laughs> diffuse the situation. Yeah. You're looking for your pet. <laughs> but that will just. Yeah. If you have social yeah. anxiety, just be like, oh, I'm so sorry. My. Cat Amber <laughs> yeah. is driving me nuts. That's yeah. why I'm so anxious. I've totally yeah. yeah. pets pets are great. That is there's a great way. So uh that's awesome. <laughs> Nick, this has been great. This I mean it's always great to just just catch up with you and chat anyway. But I, I think we've gone through a lot of stuff where that that you and I, especially in our respective roles and the things that the projects and programs we've been you know, champion, championing over the last, uh, you know, couple of years where we've gotten these experiences. So I hope uh, the folks that have uh, tuned in have gotten something, a little, you know, something out of it. Uh, yeah, and uh, by all means, uh, I think if you <laughs> reach out to us via our email or, or DMs or however you think you should now uh, and, uh, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <mind> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah just on, on tiktok basically message us on tiktok and then uh if you've got any questions or if there's anything we can do to help but um yeah absolutely and thank you so much to the interactive game and entertainment association for hosting gcap this year this has been a difficult year it's probably going to continue to be difficult in other ways but we are so supportive and appreciative for the space for us to talk about these important issues we look forward to working with IGEA on future projects and making sure that we can continue to foster the good information and the good word, uh, especially as we continue on. I love it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nika. See you Thanks. later, everyone. Bye.